three, and four. Well, glory. Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's a, another late night again, but praise the Lord, we are still here. We want to just thank God for each and every one of you that are joining us right now. Look at you already coming aboard. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. But anyway, we want to thank God for you all. And uh, tonight, uh, I'm just going to spend just a few minutes with you because tomorrow is the time that we begin our fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I want to make sure that I come and uh, make sure to address you guys tonight because uh, tomorrow is going to be a busy day for me. I'm going to be I'm going to be running to and fro, and I'm going to be praying. My best prayer time is when I'm on the road. So I got a lot of traveling to do tomorrow, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of prayer time in tomorrow. Amen. So let's pray right now. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for your hand continue resting upon us. And we thank you, Lord God, for watching over your word in our lives to perform it. You hasten to perform your word. So, Father, we thank you. We hold that dear to our heart. And so now, Father, I ask you to move tremendously upon the winds of the Spirit tonight, touching every heart and every soul under the sound of my voice, preparing them for this fast tomorrow, those that will, Father, I ask you to anoint them for this fast on tomorrow through Saturday. And God, I give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Yep, well, like I said, we got, this is a, we are preparing for this fast tomorrow. We, the, tomorrow is the first day of the last three days of the month. Amen. The first day of the last three days of the month. And so every month, the last three days, we always fast and we always pray. Every month. Amen. For the, the last three days of each month. That means when we, when this month is up, we're going to have a fresh anointing to go into our next month. Amen. A fresh anointing to go into the next month. And so we're fasting uh, these fasting times, there are only twelve hours a day. For some, that's and some and some people they still do uh, twenty four hours a day for three days, and uh, and sometimes I do it also. But I I don't ask you to do it for twenty four hours a day. I'm, the Lord want he had, he put on my heart to ask you to do it for twelve hours a day, from six a.m. to six p.m. and there's one meal a day, one meal a day. That way. That for especially for working people, for people that are that are medication and so forth and so on, that you still have opportunity to take care of your obligations in that area, Amen. So we are, we're going to be praying tomorrow morning at uh, nine a.m. Also, uh, of this, not only are we praying for three days, but we're fasting and praying for the for the uh, three times a day, Amen. We're going to be praying at 9 in the morning, then again at 12 at noon and 3 in the evening. Because tomorrow and Friday is our normal prayer prayer time, our intercessory prayer time. And so we are asking you to join us, especially all you intercessors, because you see, this is, this is, this is our normal prayer time. But also, since the, it's the last three days of the month, Saturday is added to this time, and we are fasting and praying. Amen. Prayer and fasting. And we're praying for Jerusalem. We're praying for the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gift. We're asking God for a spirit of unity among the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. And let, so, that, uh, so that the kingdom of God will be manifest in the heart of man. Amen. Because, see, God said in the church, first apostles, second prophets, and then third evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Now, 
And I believe that as we come together in a spirit of unity, that we will see this come to pass. Amen. It doesn't matter. You know, so many, so many people, they, they still focus on their denominations and their religions. And it's not about religions and it's not about denomination. It's all about the love of Christ. Amen. And when we come together with that in mind, we're not going to allow ourselves to be defeated because we come with one purpose and one goal. And that is to seek the face of God. We're consecrating ourselves for three days to the Lord. Amen. Starting tomorrow. And as we consecrate ourselves to the Lord, we are going to believe God for a spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we will know what is the hope of his calling and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Amen. We believe in God for that, that, that spirit of wisdom to rest upon us. Amen. And the revelation of the knowledge of him, of the word. Amen. Amen. And so, and we believe in God that also that, uh, that as we come together, a spirit of unity, a spirit of oneness, a spirit of one accord be with, among the body of Christ. Amen. This is so much needed right now. So much needed. Amen. There's a, there's, there's a lot of strife amongst the body. And God is looking and he's seeing how the church is going to deal with the differences. And I want to encourage you today that... This is why we pray. This is why we pray for our for our community. This is why we pray for our, our our city. This is why we pray for our state. Amen. This is why we pray for Jerusalem. This is why we pray for the the, the prime minister, his family, and the fivefold ministry gifts, and and, and uh, the body of Christ, and then our president and and uh, and all of his cabinet, and all those that are in authority. Amen. We are obligated by God to do so. Amen. And in doing so, God said we shall lead a quiet and peaceful life in godliness and honesty. Amen. And he said this is pleasing to God. This is acceptable to God. Amen. So when we fast and pray, we're not doing it to be seen of man. We're not trying to put ourselves on some pedestal. We're just doing it because God instructed us to. Now, I'm asking you because God is looking for a man or woman that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before him for the land. Look with me in the book of in the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 23, chapter 22, I mean, excuse me. Ezekiel 22. Glory. There we go. Ezekiel 22. There we go. One more page over. And there we are. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. It says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. Amen. Now we know that God is not the destroyer. Amen. We know that uh, the devil is the destroyer. Because God said, the word of God says in John 10, 10, and this is Jesus writing. He said, the thief come not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he said, but I come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. So when we come together like this, we come together knowing that God is working on our behalf. Why? Because we know that he love us, that he care for us. And he wants to see us succeed in life. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you today. That tomorrow as we start this fast on tomorrow. It's going to be the fast starts at 6 a.m. The fast begins at 6 a.m. And it ends at 6 p.m. Now if some of you want to go a uh, full 24 hour fast. Three days. Now notice this is water only. This is. And it's one, and and then you have that one meal at the end of the day, amen. Uh, it's for one, it's one meal a day, and it's water only, 
that we are fasting. And I'm encouraging you that if you're going to fast, do your best to do it right. Amen. Because that's where the reward is at. Because, see, we're consecrating ourselves to the Lord throughout the day. In the evening time, at dinner time, you get to sit down and have a dinner with your family. But don't overeat and make yourself sick. <laughs> I remember when I first started doing this, when God first told me to start doing this, I, I tried my best to make sure I had enough in me to last me another day. And, I, boy, I hurt, almost hurt myself. And so I said, Lord, I repent for that, and I quit doing that. Hey Amen. I quit doing it. I just start. I sometimes I, I sometimes I eat doing, and sometimes I don't eat. Sometimes I just go two three days, the whole three days without eating. Hey Amen. Sometimes I I eat that evening meal. It all depends on how I'm feeling. Hey Amen. But the thing about it is that when we consecrate ourselves to the Lord, we're doing it as unto the Lord, not unto man. That's the most exciting part about it. Hey Amen. Because you see, that's when God began to strengthen us. That's when He began to. Uh, 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 empower us for service. The purpose that He ordained for our lives begin to be begin to unfold. Amen. Glory to God. And the faith begin to rise to a new level when you begin to put your trust in the Lord and begin to walk with Him. Hallelujah! My God, that is awesome. That is so wonderful. Amen. So now it says in the book of in the book of Ezekiel once again, in verse number thirty, it says. It says, uh, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Amen. God is looking for a man or woman. He's looking for his children, a servant, one that love him enough to pray for their neighbor, pray for their friend, pray for their, even their enemy. Amen. God said, I sought for a man among them. That should make up the heads. In other words, God is looking right now. God is looking right now for men and women that have a heart for people, that have a heart for souls. Amen. Souls is is it should be our main focus, our main drive in in in, in serving God. Because you see, the souls is the is a great commodity on on both sides. Amen. Serve with God. Or without God. The devil wants souls just like God wants souls. Amen. And so the devil's working overtime also. He's working overtime trying to cause those that are coming to God to turn away from God. He put situations in their life, temptations and circumstances, and make them think that they cannot do it. They can't serve God. And and it's just a it's just a deception. But when God began to move by the power of his spirit, friend, there is hope for each and every one of us. We there's hope. Amen. And our hope is in the Lord our God. Glory to his name. Because he asks us to trust him. And then he said in Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy way acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. This is what God really wants. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust him with our whole heart. With our whole heart. Amen. And so let's do that. Because you see, he's calling us to a faith walk. Faith in God will bring you to a place in him that you've never been. Amen. It's, look at what Romans 10 and 8 says. It, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. That is the word of faith which we preach. How does, the, how does that compare with, our, with the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23? They kind of, they, they kind of come close together because you see they practically saying the same thing glory to God because God want us to as we consecrate ourselves to him we 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 we, we we're taking a faith is because you got to take a step of faith in order to do it because it's hard for someone to stop eating when they normally like to eat <laughs> but to consecrate yourself to the Lord it means that God is going to 
God is God got something for you. Because you see, you you are you are sacrificing. You are sacrificing, Michelle. You're sacrificing. Glory to God. You are sacrificing. And and, and in a sacrifice, that means you're giving up something that you love, are a part of yourself. Amen. So God is looking for us to sacrifice and pray. Let's look at 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. In 2 Chronicles, I like to look at chapter 7. You know, this is, these, are, these are the scriptures that we always go to. Amen. Because these are the scriptures that he gave me for this, for this section. And, uh, and, I, and I choose to follow his instructions. And so in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, chapter 7, I want to look at uh, something here that's going to, that's going to, that, I mean, that, that's going to bless your heart. Because he says right here, now let's look at verse number 11. Now let's look at verse number, verse number 12. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 12 says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayers and have chosen this place for, my, for myself, for an house of sacrifice. God told him. Now, I have chosen this place for myself and for a house of sacrifice. Because you know that what God is about to ask is going gonna, is, is gonna to require sacrifice. And to pray means we have to sacrifice. Because, see, there's a lot of things we could be doing other than praying. Amen. But when you pray, you sacrifice. Glory to God. Because prayer is a, is a lot of work. If you pray properly, it's work. Amen. And so this is why God knows that it's a sacrifice. Because, you see, you got to focus. Sometimes focusing can be difficult. But if you focus properly and you pray properly, you're going to have the proper response from God. Amen. That's right, Pastor Johnson. That's right. God is looking. Amen. So he said in verse number 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 12, and said, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, now, notice who appeared to Solomon. It was the Lord. It was the Lord appeared to Solomon. Amen. And, 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 he, and he said, he said, I have heard your prayers. I have heard thy prayers and have chosen this place for myself, for a house of sacrifice. Listen to how God is talking to Solomon here. Amen. Verse, now, verse number 13, he said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. You see, all of these things that God is mentioning, it has an if by it. He said, if I do, if I do. Amen. And I notice what he said about you and me. He said, if my people. That's, now he's talking about us now. Which are called by my name, verse 14. Shall humble himself and pray. Because you see, he knows there's a great chance that people are not going to humble themselves because there's a lot of selfishness in the heart of man and a lot of pride. Amen. And so God said the same thing about the people that he said about the, about the, the rain and the locusts and, and so forth and so on. Now he said the same thing about people. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Because he knows that there's a possible chance that they will not humble themselves. That they will not stop. They will not seek his face. They will not turn from their wicked ways. So he said it plain and clear. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. And I know what he said. And pray. And pray. Now see, now that's a job. To pray is a job. But not only does he want you to pray, he wants you to be focused. He said, seek my face. In other words, Give me your undivided attention. 
lay all your focus on that which I desire. Amen. And all of it, I'm telling you folks, because God is looking, because you see, what God is asking of us is a sacrifice. How can one make up the hitch and stand in the gap without him presenting his body to God as a living sacrifice? And the Bible says, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Amen. So to present ourselves to God is a, it, it is a sacrifice. And to, and to go on a, a three-day fast, what we're going on right now, starting tomorrow morning, a three-day fast without food for 12 hours, amen, and only one meal a day and water during the day only, water or liquids only during the day, amen, that's, got, that's a sacrifice, amen, only liquids during the day, but at, at nighttime, it means that at 6 p.m., you can have yourself a meal. That's a sacrifice. How many of you willing to make this sacrifice for the Lord? Amen. Because to make this sacrifice, you have to uh, commit this time to the Lord. And the Lord will strengthen you for the fast. My God, I tell you what, I, I have done this so many times. I know... I know exactly uh, when this when this time of the month come around, some, because my my spirit is in great expectation. My spirit is in great expectation because you see, I've been doing this for a while, and now God has wanted me to bring it into the open so that people that want to be a part of this intercessory prayer team can also fast and pray and. And, and become more sensitive to the things of God. Because when we're fasting and praying, we're going to be praying at 9 in the morning, 12 in the morning, 3 in the evening. These are Pacific areas. Amen. At 9 in the morning, we're going to be praying for the, the Jerusalem, peace of Jerusalem, praying for the prime minister, praying for those that are in authority in Jerusalem for 10 minutes. At 12 noon, we're going to be praying for the body of Christ. We've got five-fold ministry gifts. We're going to be praying for a spirit of unity and one mind and one accord amongst the the, the gifts of the Spirit, amen, that God has set among us in the church. Then at 3 p.m., we're going to be praying for our leader of our nation, President Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump, praying for those that are in authority, pray for his cabinet, and all those that's in authority, amen, and for, for our military personnel, amen. We're going to be praying for a lot of things. But all of these, on these particular prayer times, these are only 10 minutes at a time, only 10 minutes. But now throughout the day, we're fasting throughout the day up from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So as we're fasting throughout the day, we pray for whatever else the Lord plays upon our hearts. Amen. But during those specific times, these are the things that God ordained for us to pray for on these particular times. At 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, 3 in the evening. Amen. For only, and, and, and on those appointments, that's, on, that's 10 minutes at a time. 10 minutes each. Amen. Not 35, 40 minutes. You can think of a lot of things to pray for. But when you go, when you start praying, ask God, Lord, which way shall I pray? How would you have me to pray for the Jerusalem and for the prime minister? Father, what is on your heart concerning them? Amen. And then just, then God going to answer you. Then just pray the will of God. If you don't know, pray that let Father thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Pray the word. Pray the word. It's so important that we pray the word because you see, the word is the only thing that's going to make a difference. Not what we think. Not what we, uh, 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 not what we can uh, uh, conjure up. But what the word says. Amen. And the same thing at three and the same thing at four. Let me say, uh, at uh, 12 and at three. Amen. And so God is, God is looking for a man, and God is looking for a woman that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before him for the land that he will not destroy. It. And he said, but I found none. He said, but I found none. And I'm asking you today, I'm asking you today, will you join us in this prayer on tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.? The fast starts at 6 a.m. Amen. And, and normally that's the time we start praying. At 6 a.m. Amen. But then at 9 o'clock, you have an appointment with God. Amen. For On the behalf of Jerusalem. 
but you're still praying even then and before then. And at 12 o'clock, you have another appointment with God where you're going to be praying specifically for the body of Christ. Amen. And that's only for 10 minutes. And then at 3 p.m., you have another appointment with God that you're praying for our president. You're praying for all those that's in authority. You're praying for our government. Amen. We're praying for our police officers. We're praying for everyone that's in authority. Why? Because we're tired of the, 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 the killing and we're tired of the, 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 the abuse. Amen. We got to pray. It's a must. If we don't, then the devil is going to continue to run wild over our land. And that should not be so. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all them that dwell therein. The earth is not the devil. It doesn't belong to the devil. The earth is the Lord's. So we, as a people of God, we should begin to pray like never before. Amen, amen, amen. We are, I'm telling you, America is in, is in uh, a revival. You may not see it, you may not understand it, but America is in revival. Amen. That's a revolution, a spiritual revolution that is taking place in America. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> so thankful for that. We got, now I'm telling you, and this is just the, this is just the beginning. God is not done. There's so much more that God is going to do. But he need us praying. He need us praying. He need us seeking his face. He need us watching and praying all as much as possible. And also, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to do another a prayer conference. Amen. Very soon. I'm getting ready to do another prayer conference very soon. And also I'm going to do with that same conference it's going to be a healing conference, a prayer and healing conference. Amen. And it's going to be very soon. Once I get all that information together, I will be letting you all know because we just had a very successful meeting in Alabama uh, uh, three, four, uh, I think about three, four weeks ago when we was there in Alabama. We had a very successful uh, prayer and healing conference there. And it was, uh, it was, it was great. It was so, it was wonderful. That was, that was, that was a great turnout and, and, uh, God just touched his people. Amen. It was a powerful anointing and people, they, they, you know, when I called back to Alabama and, and, and some of them called me and they said, pastor, you just don't know how much you blessed us, how we walked away from this thing, more strengthened, more, more confident than we've ever have. He said, and it, you know, and it was, it was, and it, and I thought it was, I thought it was just great because you see, God, he ministered to his people and he want to do it again here, amen, in Sacramento, California. How many, will you, how many of you will come when we hold this prayer and healing conference? Will you come? It's going to be an open door, amen. It's going to be an open door to you. We, we, we want to invite you to come, amen. And so he says right here, now, and let me read this one more time. Uh, let's just read it. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 12 says, The Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Now notice what he said about verse number 7. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. God is talking to us, folks. And this is why we must pray. This is why we must pray. How many of you can see, can, how many of you can, 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 you know, can believe God for restoration in your home, in your community, in your city, in your church, 
Amen. In your state, in your country, in your nation, in the nation that you're from. Amen. How many of you can believe God for restoration? Amen. Because you see, God is moving by the power of His Spirit and He wants us to pray fervently because it's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. Now, let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Amen. Glory. Because I want to uh, I want to just make sure that we're all on the same page. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 2, and it reads, because see, God commanded us, and I'm just covering all bases because I want you to see that this is not something that man has called. It's something that God has done. God commanded this. Amen. So in verse number 1, this is 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, I exalt therefore that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For all men. Amen. God is looking for us to pray for all men. Good, bad, or indifferent. Amen. God is looking for us to pray for all men. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Now, and I, you know, for a while we heard every time you look in the news, there was there was a lot of stuff going on about the police officers and, and people getting shot, people being killed, and, and so much, so forth and so on. And God told me, he said, he said, son, I want you to start praying for the officers. And I want you to start praying for the for the for the for the people. And so I started praying for the officers. And you know, when I started praying for the officers, a lot of that stuff that was happening began to die down very, very uh, quietly. Uh, just like it came in, it came in swiftly and it, and it went out. Amen. It went back out. Because there was nothing but an attack of the enemy. That's all it was. Trying to bring a spirit of discord amongst our people, amongst our, 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 the people of the land. The devil, he's, he, he's very cunning, and he will use whosoever he can to bring a spirit of division among the people, amen, and to cause riots and fights and, and all that other stuff to break out. And sometimes in the process, people lose their life, amen, because the devil, that's he's doing his job. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But we've got to realize that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, folks, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual weakness in high places. And that's why intercessory prayer is so much needed in our land and in your lands. If you if you look at me from Africa, you look at me from India, you look at me from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Ukraine or Russia, Amen. Uh, uh, wherever you're looking at from Bahamas. Uh, Wherever you're looking at it from, amen, God wants you to understand that you have been given a commission, and that is to pray. Man should always pray and not to faint. Man should always pray and not to faint. It was, you know, even, it doesn't matter where you're from, Philippines, it doesn't matter where you're from. The same God that is here, he's right where you are at the same time. He's right where you are. The same as he is there, he's here. The same as he is here, he's there. And he's looking for a people that will pray. He's looking for a people that will humble themselves and pray. Not for a people that will try to get up to be seen before men in prayer. God said this person will have his reward. Amen. And so when we look at this, he says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, it said, and I exalt, therefore, that first of all, prayer, uh, excuse me, I exalt, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And then it said, verse 2, for kings and for, for, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life 
in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge unto the knowledge of the truth. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Glory to God. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. See, when we are interceding, when we are praying, when we are when we when we are talking to God, Jesus is interceding for us. He's talking to the Father for us. And he's watching over, he's watching our back as we watching the back of others. Amen. You see, it, when we are not selfish in our prayer life, in other words, just praying for our four and no more, God is not going to be selfish concerning what he's asked us to do. He's going to bless us. He's going to equip us. He's going to give us everything we need to accomplish it. Amen. And so I want to encourage you folks. Tomorrow morning, this fast starts at 6 a.m. The, the fasting starts at 6 a.m. And it ends at 6 p.m. And it's water only throughout the day or liquids only throughout the day you can drink water you can drink iced tea whatever you want to drink but no solid food throughout the day amen and in the evening you have one meal eat a sensible meal don't try to overfill yourself because you won't do nothing but hurt yourself just eat a sensible meal and you'd be surprised the strength that you will regain just from that sensible reasonable meal amen Amen. And I want to encourage you that. I want to encourage you. All prayer warriors, this is so important. Amen. I want to turn you now back to the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Amen. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 58. There we go. And I want to look at a couple of verses here. Because I'm believing that our Father is going to speak to hearts all across this land. Amen. Every one of us are important right now. So let's read verse number six, verse number five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? See, because in order for you to fast, that means you have to humble yourself. Because for this type of fast that God is bringing us on, folks, not many people want to fast like this. Not many people want to fast at all. And I remember when I, when God first told us to do this, and that was some, there was a man, he wanted to do it so bad. He said, but he said, but pastor, you know what? I've never fasted before in my life and, and I don't know how to do it. Amen. And and I just coached him along. I said, just trust God one day at a time. And if you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Just get back up and go at it again. Amen. God is not going to get mad if you make a mistake. He's not going to fire you because you made a mistake. God is going to continue his love for you. Amen. His love for you is from everlasting to everlasting. So don't think you're going to disappoint God if you if you get halfway through the fast and, and make a mistake. Don't think you're going to disappoint God. God is not going to be disappointed. He's going to be glad that you at least tried. And he's going to say, don't worry about it. You'll get it right. You, 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 you keep trying, you'll get it. See, God is not going to get mad at you because you make a mistake. Matter of fact, it's just going to be just the opposite. You're going to put a smile on his face because you because you uh, want to. And when you have that want to, God can take that want to and make something out of it. Amen. So just have that want to. Amen. 
So he says right here, he says right in verse number five again, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day of for a man to afflict his to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Verse six: It's not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the band of wickedness. You see, deliverance is going to come. To those that are sincere. Amen. I'm telling you, you can begin to expect miracles. <clears throat> Amen. And so he said, it's not this the fast that I have chosen. Isaiah chapter 58 verse number 6. It's not this the fast that I have chosen. To loose the band of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. How many of you tired of that spirit of depression hanging around? Well, friend, you're about to be set free. You're about to be set free. You say you're going to try it tomorrow. Don't just try it. I believe you can do it. I believe you can do it, eh? I really do. Amen. Because you see, I was like you one day, Abe. I said, well, I'm going to try. And I did more than just try. I, my first time I went on fast, it was a a uh, three-day fast with nothing, no water, no food, no nothing, amen, and that was a, a rough one, <laughs> but you know what, I did it, I did it, and I know that if I can do it, you can do it too, Abe, amen, and, a, and all, a lot of you that is listening right now, you may have never fast before in your life. But I'm going to pray for you that God will give you the strength and his ability for this fast. You're not going to have to fast in your own strength. You're going to fast in the strength of the Lord. Amen. In the strength of the Lord. Glory to God. And so he says in verse number six, one more time, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the band of wickedness? See, God wants to bring you to a spirit, he won't bring a spirit of restoration in your life. He's going to unloose that band of weakness. He's going to, knows what he said. He's, un, he's going to go shit, keep out a lot about something. Unloose the band of weakness. And he said, undo the heavy burden. Because he, not only it, the band of weakness, uh, uh, that the enemy trying to hold you in bondage in that area, but he's got you burdened down so much that you can't think right. You can't, I mean, and then, and then, and then he says, "Going to loose the, he going to going and and to let the press go free." See, God is looking at you because He wants you to look at other people. See, Jesus is seated in heavenly places, interceding for you and me right now, right now, Amen. It said, and so, so it said, let the oppressed go free and to, and that ye break every yoke and that ye break every yoke. Amen. See, God is looking for restoration in the heart of man. And he's looking at his purpose that he's called you. He's looking at the promise that he has made to you and he's asking you to join us in this time of prayer and fasting for the next three days from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. water only one meal a day in the evening time and I know that you can do it and I know a lot of you want to do it and that right pastor amen so just make up in your mind right now that you're going to do it. I'm going to pray with you right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive that blessing. Thank you very much. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person, Father, under the sound of my voice, and for those that will hear this on tomorrow. Father, that this 
time of fasting and consecration, consecrating ourselves to you, it's not something that man has thought of, but God, but by your instructions, we as a people have come to honor you and to lay down our lives for the gospel's sake and for the people that you are sending us to. And Father, we realize that not all will hear, not all will honor, not all will obey, but there are those that, Father, you have ordained to hear. There are those that you have ordained to obey, and they will hear, and they will follow after righteousness, godliness, and holiness. And they will come to know the truth, and the truth shall make them free. Father, I ask you to breathe upon them right now. Those who have made a decision to fast on this next three days. I ask you, Father, that you would breathe upon them a freshness of your presence right now. Father, let the impartations, Father, that added strength to be multiplied within them, that they will have the will to carry out this fast, and that God, that your divine protection will be upon them through this fast, because we're not only fasting, Lord, we're praying and fasting, fasting and praying. We're come, we're 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 taking up, we're putting on the whole armor of God. We're girding up our loins with the truth. We're putting on the breastplate of righteousness and our feet being shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, Father, we take the shield of faith to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We put on the heaven of salvation and we take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all men in prayer and supplication, we come boldly before the throne of grace, boldly that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And Father, as we pray for our, our nation, as we pray for Jerusalem, as we pray for the body of Christ, as we pray, Father, for the for the President of the United States, and Father, we believe, God, that you are going to move supernaturally, and God, you're going to bring, Father, this revolution, this this revolution that you have, that you have released in the, in, the, in the land. Oh, God, you're going to cause America to be honored once again. And your name is going to be glorified, Father, because, God, we are your people, the sheep of your pastors. And we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you, Lord God, for your name is high above every name. And at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess of things in earth, things in under earth, and, 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 and glory to God, and things in heaven. God, Father, we thank you for it. And we bless you. Now, Father, I bless your people. And I ask you, Father, to touch right now. Breathe upon them right now in the name of Jesus. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in the lives of these intercessors in earth as it is in heaven. God, you call them. You ordain them. You are releasing a priestly anointing right now upon them. Father, oh, she came out of our side. A priestly anointing right now is being released upon you intercessors right now. In the name of Jesus. Those of you that's going to be fasting this week. That's going to be a priestly anointing resting upon you. For this time of prayer and fasting. Fasting and praying. Amen. Because we are consecrating ourselves to the Lord. Amen. And next month. You're going to see a difference in your life. Because of what God is doing today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name. Father, we worship you. Now, just worship God now. Just worship. Father, we worship you and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Oh, God, that you are concerned for souls, the, the people of the land. And God, as we pray and as we intercede for them, God, you're going to move supernaturally among them and bring them to that place of peace. Father, we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, folks, listen to me. I, I need y'all to pray a special prayer for me because I'm believing God for a building and and I believe in God for uh, this building very soon. I need it. I want it. I need it very soon. Amen. 
And I want a building big enough to hold conferences in, to hold big meetings in. Amen. So, and I want it to be paid for. <laughs> I want it paid for. Glory to God. Amen. So y'all be in agreement with me that God will move supernaturally among us and bless us with this building and that we may be about our father's business. Amen. Reaching the loss of this land. God bless you all. And if God permit me, I will see you all again tomorrow. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you all for joining us in the morning for this time of intercessory prayer. And we will be praying for you and you be praying for us as we pray for you. Thank you, Brother Abe. I look forward to, to, to hearing your report. Amen. I'm praying for you, Abe. Don't, don't, you, don't you think that I'm not. I see you there. I'm praying for you. Amen. I believe you're going to make it. Ah, glory to God. Y'all have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye.